Well, I don't know whether President Bush knew it or not, but his speechwriter was quoting uh, William Bora, the senator from Idaho, a Republican isolationist from the 30s. I don't know what relevance he has to uh, Barack Obama's call for talk. Anyway, Obama responded in a statement that reads, It is sad that President Bush should use a speech to the Knesset on the 60th anniversary of Israel's independence to launch a false political attack. George Bush knows that I have never supported engagement with terrorists and the president's extraordinary politicization of foreign policy and the politics of fear do nothing to secure the American people or our stalwart ally. Israel, what do you think, Senator? Well, I think, number one, Bush's policies made America weaker and Israel weaker. And look, if it's appeasement to talk with Iran, then what the president must be the biggest appeaser that we've had in the last 15 years. What did he do? He sat down and talked with Kim Jong-il. He's meeting with a North Korean guy who everybody talks about being a proliferator of weapons of mass, the technology of weapons of mass destruction. He's writing letters to him saying, dear Mr. Chairman, his administration asked me several years ago, get in a plane and go fly to Libya to meet with Gaddafi. He cut a deal with Gaddafi. I don't call that appeasement. I call that sound foreign policy. Now, how can it be that you sit down and talk with a proliferator of nuclear weapons that creates a much greater threat to the United States than any other country I can think of off the top of my head? How can you sit down and cut a deal with, with Gaddafi, which is a wise thing we did, he did, he should be credited for it, and then talk about anyone willing to change the policy? with regard to the Middle East and Iran in particular as ipso facto an appeaser. It's pure, pure political gamesmanship appealing to American fear and trying to, in fact, connect the dots here and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, besmirch uh, um, uh, the Democrat, the, one of the likely Democratic nominees. Do you have any doubt that, Senate, that uh, President Bush was talking about Barack Obama today in Israel? Well, let me put it this way. It's an unusual thing to talk about, quoting, quote, as one United States senator said, even though we know it's Bora, the senator from Idaho, back who was an isolationist. And secondly, I guess I, I don't know. I want to make it clear to everybody listening to you. I don't know, but I've been told by responsible press people that on background in Israel, they were told this was directed at Obama. Now, if it wasn't, maybe the president should come out and say it wasn't. But think of what the presumptive Democratic uh, Republican nominee said just, what, 10 days ago. He said, well, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, Hamas is for Obama, and even Danny Ortega likes him. So I'll let you all draw your conclusions. Well, let's take a look at what Senator McCain said in response to what uh, President Bush said. It sounds like they're doing an alley-oop play here in basketball. They're working together because here's Senator McCain basically underlining the shot against Barack. It does bring up an issue we'll be discussing with the American people, and that is why, why does Barack Obama, Senator Obama, want to sit down with a state sponsor of terrorism. What does he want to talk about with, with Ahmadinejad, who said that Israel is a stinking corpse, who said that he wants to wipe Israel off the map, who's sending the most explosive devices into Iraq, killing Americans. What does he want to talk about with him? Well, it seems like it's the alley oop play in the NBA, Senator. I mean, uh, the president Look, threw the ball up near the basket and John McCain put it in. I mean, it's against the to talk about. I'll tell you what he wants to talk about. He wants to talk about the same thing Secretary of Defense Gates wants to talk about. He wants to talk about the same thing that Condi Rice wants to talk about. Both of them were saying we should be talking. We should be talking. And since when does the president or John McCain think that no does not exist in the vocabulary of an American president? Talking doesn't mean you agree. Why would you talk? You would talk to enhance America's interest and change behavior. That's why you would talk. The same reason why the president of the United States is corresponding and talking with one of the most outrageous leaders in the world, Kim Jong-il. The same reason why he corresponded with and his people talked with Gaddafi, who we labeled a terrorist in a terrorist state. Why? To stop their conduct. I find this so disappointing, Chris, to get into this. This is, this is 
this is hyperbole well, and attack masking as a policy. There is, I well, mean, it it's seems ridiculous. to me that uh, it seems to me that a couple of times in history we failed to talk to our enemies and we caused ourselves big trouble. We didn't talk to the head of North Korea when Atchison suggested that the line of defense didn't include North and South Korea. We did make a mistake when April Glaspie talked to Saddam Hussein and didn't tell him we'd fight for Kuwait. It seems to me there are examples in the past of when you ought to talk to the bad guys and tell them where the line is drawn. Chris, My look, thought. Sick. There, there, there's a great quote from John Kennedy. President John Kennedy when he was president. He said we should never negotiate out of fear, but we should never fear to negotiate. Again, let me just ask the American people listening to this. Tell me how as President of the United States you say we should be in full blown direct discussions with North Korea, a proliferator of nuclear technology with an army staring down the throat of 30,000 Americans who are on site, who is, present a real threat, who have missile technology and nuclear capability. How can we talk with them and negotiate with them and say it is appeasement to even attempt to broach a discussion with the Iranians? And furthermore, Chris, the only thing that keeps this Iranian authority in power with a country and a population that hates them is the fact that we never make our voice known to the Iranian people. Right. What we do is we stand out there and rattle the saber against okay. guys who are not good guys and we unite the Iranian people. Well, this is what's good policy. for the goose, good for the gander. Senator Clinton, a while back, like about a week ago, talked about obliterating the country of Iran. Talk about saber rattling. Didn't that sort of discourage the secular forces in Iran from standing up to the uh, the leadership? Look, the when you say you're going to obliterate no, 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 the whole country, no. The, the the context in which he said that is the way we we talked about mutual assured destruction. In fairness to her, she like said that word if, obliterate? if they attack. If they attacked Israel, we would respond. And the brand, no, and maybe obliterate. No, well, obliterate, that's what happens when you respond. Guess what, Chris? No uh, way of using nuclear weapons in Iran without it resulting in obliteration. So you think that wasn't over the top by her? No, I think it's a better word could have been chosen, but she stated a rational policy. The policy these guys the are stating is irrational. You don't think Hillary Clinton and, and George Bush are competing to see who can be the most hawkish in defense of Israel? You don't think this is politics, domestic American politics at work here? No, I think it's a statement of policy. Look, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm here to defend what I think is a rational yeah. position taken. And the rational position is Iran should understand that if they use nuclear weapons against any other power, they run the risk of literally being obliterated, just like yeah. we talked about what would happen if Saddam Hussein had used nuclear weapons. We were told he had, but he never had. Okay, it's great having you on. Thanks for coming on on a big news night, Senator Joe Biden, Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee.